So today we're going to try to fix a little problem we encountered yesterday. Uh, I guess it's not really a, uh, a problem, it's more a shortcoming. Um, last time we added these ruler markings to our projectile motion simulator. Um, and they're pretty helpful, but it's not straightforward ahead of time to figure out how far you need the rulers to go. And obviously you don't want them going off you know, to something ridiculous like a million, because that's going to use up um, unnecessary computer time. And so what I'd like to do today is um, I think we'll keep the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this, uh, this initial code where we add in the rulers, where we create the first set of rulers, um, but we'll add in a chunk down here where we automatically add more rulers as we need them. Um, so what we're going to do here uh, let's see, let's do this after the time update. So we'll take care of all the physics up here, and then we'll take care of the display stuff down here. So here we'll say add ruler boxes as necessary. And so we've already got um, some of the logic set up. So we've already got this uh, box X max and box Y max that take care of the maximum um, X position and maximum Y position of the boxes. So an easy way to do this would be to just say, uh, just put in a check for if the projectile's position in the x direction is greater than the max box x. Um, uh, excuse me, max x, or excuse me, box x max, box x max. There we go. Yeah, that's how I set it up, right? Box x max. Cool. Um, I'll probably need to do some adjusting to this based on the geometry because this is the center position. So um, I may need to, you know, add or subtract half of a dx to this. But we'll 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 give it a run first and see how I need to adjust it. Um, so let's see. So we're going to add the. Uh, let's see. So this, in this case, we need to add a box in the x direction. Um, add box in on x axis. Cool. And so what we'll do is we'll grab our box creation code here. We'll say copy, um, and then we'll say paste here. Uh, so let's see. Um, I've already got one at box x max, right? So what I need to do here is I just need to have this be box x max, and I just need to increment box x max by dx. So in other words, I'm gonna I'm gonna increase my maximum uh, 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 x measurement here, and I'm gonna add a box that's located at that location. Everything else should still be fine. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Let's let's go ahead and run this here as it is now, just to test it. And then once we get this fine tuned, we'll copy it over to the. Uh, to the y direction as well. Okay, so our projectile we know is going to exceed our maximum ruler here. Okay, there we got another one, another one, another one. Boom. Okay, so that, wow, that worked out well the first time. Cool. Um, and this was able to add on as, as it was needed. As the projectile moved farther to the right, it added these on. Um, so I think we can go ahead and copy and paste this down for the y direction. So this will be adding box on the y axis. So again, we're gonna change all of our x's into y's. So we've got our box y max being incremented by dy. Um, and again, we need to flip these around here. And we'll just say box y max. And again, I need to flip these. I suppose I could have just copied and pasted the um, the Y code from up above, but I would have had to make changes to that too. So, you know, you're making changes either way. So I've got Y, Y, everywhere a Y. All right, cool. Uh, let's try that and we'll zoom out here. Okay, it is automatically adding them. It's also, it was automatically adding them. It looked like it was changing the scale too, which is a little bit strange. Um, cool, so we were able to automatically add our Ys. Now I take a look here and I see that it, um, I, it, it added an extra one here that I technically don't need because the peak, it looks like is right in the middle, uh, is, is just shy of the top of this one. 
but uh, that's okay. It's okay for it to add more markings than I actually need. I'd rather it add more markings than fewer. Um, uh, in other words, I'd rather create this one and not need it than, for example, for it to go just above this one and not create it. Um, let's try uh, a few other. Let's try a few other scenarios. So let's try. Um, I guess the easiest thing to do is to increase the speed. That's going to get it to go higher and farther before we start playing around with the angle. Cool. So we're getting some. We're getting more added up here. Oh, I have lost my. Okay, I just need to rotate a little bit. <clears throat> So I may need to increase the thickness of these boxes as I go. Okay, cool. So we've got our uh, we've got our our markings automatically added. Um, it's getting kind of difficult to see them as I zoom out, though. Um, so what I would need to be able to do would be to uh, move this thing around. The default is for you to be able to right click and rotate the scene. But I also want to be able to click and drag to move the scene around. So let me cut here and look up how to do that and I'll add that in. Okay, so I've made some progress on getting our display adjustable. Um, first of all, I had to not declare or not use the, C the display command. I just have to set the attributes of the scene outside here. Um, and then I've... Uh, added in, let's see, this is not yet draggable, but this is adjustable. Uh, I've added in a function down that looks for uh, whenever the mouse is down. I don't need that print statement anymore. Um, and it'll adjust the center of the scene to wherever the mouse is. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's going to bind the mouse down, the left mouse button going down with that down command. So whenever I left click in here, it's going to adjust the location of the center accordingly. Um, I had hoped to be able to have it to where you could click and drag around, um, but I'm having a little trouble with the drag commands. But right now you just have to kind of click wherever you want the new center to be. Um, so I'll work more on the dragging portion a little bit later. Um, in order to test it, I did have to take out the, um, or I didn't have to, it was easier to take out the uh, the animation. So let's put the animation back in. And now as it goes along, I can change the center and follow this thing wherever it goes. I can also still zoom out. So I can have my new center down here. So it's pretty straightforward to adjust that. Boom, so now if I want, I can go to where the ball is and now I can zoom in and I can count my, uh, my ruler markings a little bit more easily. Um, or I can go up here along the vertical axis and count those a little bit more easily. So that's handy. I'll continue to work off camera um, to make that a little bit more user friendly. Uh, but for right now, that will work out well for us. Next time, I think what we'll do is start playing around with these uh, different initial conditions and see how our trajectory changes. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.